Hi, Bill Lanting, America's allergist. Today I wanted to go through one of the types of asthma therapy. This is the primary one. It's called inhaled corticosteroids or inhaled steroids. There are many different types out there and they come in different delivery systems. All have their different effect in this, different strengths and the ways that you receive them or get them. But they all, they all work very well and your physician will help with you choose which one is more specifically for you. You know, there are different ones out there like Qvar, which is beclomethasone, there's Flovent, uh, and they come in those puffers like Alvesco. There are the twist halers like Asminex or Pulmacort, where uh, they have this little twisty inhalation device. Um, there are discus uh, preparations, mainly either from Flovent. Um, and then for our little guys, they actually have nebulized uh, inhaled steroids. We actually put them in nebulizer, it turns the liquid into the mist, and they take it in with a mask. Uh, let me say one thing too, if you are doing that with your children, remember the mask is the way to use that. If you use the T-tube, you lose a lot of the dose, they don't even get a lot of the stuff. So you have to figure out which one of them is gonna help you. But, but why do you do this, okay? Because inflammation causes constriction and that's what causes the asthma and the asthma symptoms. So think of it this way. If you had a mosquito bite, you might put cordate on it because that's a topical steroid or topical anti-inflammatory. So when you take asthma medications, inhaled steroids, you inhale it down in your lungs, that's like topical therapy. You're putting the stuff where you need it. Instead of taking a pill and letting it go everywhere, you put it where the action is. And that's the beauty of inhaled steroids. Now, we have different delivery systems these days. Now, in the old days, we used to have something called a meter dose inhaler, which used to blast you and, you know, you could try to capture some of it. So that did not work that well, but it was better than nothing since it was the first stuff. Those are now off the market because the CFCs in them were hurting the ozone layer, so they've been outlawed and they're off the market. The next thing to come out was a discus, and there's this plastic disc that you click and you inhale it. Um, it was a much better system than the first system and gave twice as much delivery as that. But if you didn't do it just right and hold it like this, you didn't get the medicine. So for those of you who are still on a discus, remember, you gotta click it flat and keep it flat, or you might lose some of the medicine. The next type of inhalation device were the twist halers, the ones that it's kind of like a, a deodorant bar, you know, where you can, it shaves a little bit off and you inhale that stuff. So that's stuff called Pomacort and Asminex. Very effective, probably 35, 40% delivery. Whereas when we go back to the old ones, the first one gave you 7% and the disc is 14%. The new type of inhaler are HFAs and they're a puffer that look like the old guys, but they come out differently. Instead of blasting you, they come out in a turbulent fashion, and you're actually able to capture the dose. In fact, if you do it right, you can have 40, 45, 50% delivery, or even better. So there are many different medications now that use that system, whether it be Qvar or Alvesco. I think Floven still makes one. Um, so again, you have those different delivery devices so again, it's a matter of which medicine do you need, what strength, what potency, which delivery system works well for you. But it's a matter of doing it correctly and doing it consistently. Remember, asthma is a daily disease, a daily inflammation in your airways. You need daily anti-inflammatory therapy when you're a persistent asthmatic, okay? So what's the proper technique? Well, if you have one of those twist inhalers, it's just a matter of licking your lips, inhaling real deep, and holding for 10, 12, 15, 20 seconds and holding it as long as you can and then exhaling. And then most of you will be taking two puffs of this each administration once or twice a day depending on what your doctor thinks you need. The other system are the HFAs where you puff and inhale. So you have to imagine that there's kind of like blue smoke and it's floating around and then you inhale and that goes down. And so what you want to do is use the medicine so it follows that flow down. So you don't want to hit it and then try to suck it in and capture it. You want to have the airflow going down and then capture it. So what you should do is start to inhale, then hit it, suck deep, and hold. And keep holding. Because the longer you hold your breath, the longer it's in there, the more time the medication has to work on the inflamed airway. No matter which system you do, then the important thing after that 
is to wash and spit and gargle and spit. Because when you do this, it goes in the lungs, but some gets on the roof of the mouth and the back of the throat. So what you want to do is wash and spit to get it out of here, and then gargle and spit to get it off the back of your throat. So you don't get things like an irritated throat or hoarseness or even thrush, you know, that fungi che cheesy stuff that gets in the back there. Preventable if you do this good oral washing. So again, inhaled steroids, the primary way to treat asthma or, you know, persistent daily asthma. This is Bill Lanting, America's Allergist.